So you invested in a Viqua IHS-12 D4 or an IHS-22 D4 or an IHS-22 E4 to make sure the, the water at your home cottage or cabin is bacteria-free for your family and it's been in use for a year and now it's time for the annual maintenance. But is this something you can do yourself? It, what's involved? What order do you do it in? How difficult is it? And are you sure you can really do it yourself? Relax, you definitely can. I'm going to show you how starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now, this video is for you if you're a do it yourself homeowner, you've got a cottage or a cabin, and your Viqua mini rack system, the LED has gone yellow telling you that it's uh, about time to change that lamp and those filters, or even worse, it's flashing red and beeping you, telling you that it's time for the annual maintenance. Typically, you'll only need to replace the lamp after the timer has expired, but the filters, they would need to be replaced at least once a year or whenever your water flow slows down. And just so you know, this maintenance procedure is the same whether you have an IHS 12D4, IHS 22D4, or an IHS 22E4. Now, if you're not 100% sure how these ultraviolet disinfection systems work, I've got a great YouTube video that explains it all. I'll put a link in the description down below. I definitely suggest you check it out. So you're going to need to know which replacement filters and UV lamp you need to get for this maintenance. Now, to find that out, you can check your manual. Now, if you're not sure which model number you have, check over here. It's got it written on the side of the controller. Now, if you're still not sure what you need, no problem. Just take a picture of your system, email it to us at info at waterestore.com. We'll check it out for you and let you know. And where can you get them? Well, we offer bundles of the correct replacement lamp and filters on our websites, either waterestore.com in the U.S. or waterestore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. I'll put a link in the description down below. So before you start, you're going to have to have a few things ready. So one of the things you're going to have to have is a bucket about two-thirds full of some warm, soapy water. You're going to have to have some nice clean rags and you're going to have to have some towels to spread down because there will be some water getting spilled during this process. I also suggest you have a spare quart sleeve just in case something happens to go wrong and it breaks during the process. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is shut off the water coming into the system. So if you have a ball valve like this, you just turn it 90 degrees. If you've got a gate valve, you know, with a round handle on it, just shut it off. Then go anywhere in the house that uses water, laundry room, anything like that. Open up the faucet and let the water run until it slows right down to a trickle. That releases all the pressure in the whole system. Once you've done that, then you should have another valve after the UV system to make sure that the, all the water from your house doesn't drain back. So then you close that. Next, you need to unplug the system from the wall. And then while that lamp is cooling, I suggest this is a great time to change those filters. So each of the filter housings has a button at the top to release any pressure in the filter housing. So press those buttons and see if any uh, water comes out. Again, releasing that pressure. And then at the bottom of the filter housing, you'll see that there's a brass plug. This one right here. So you can unscrew that and what that does, it drains the water out of the filter housing while you're changing the filter. And that makes it much easier to handle because it's much lighter. Also, it makes 100% sure that all the pressure is gone. So once you've removed those, then with the wrench that comes with the system, attach it to the collar at the top and then loosen it off. So lefty loosey, righty tighty. So we're going left to loosen it off. Unscrew that collar. and then remove the filter. So you're gonna dump out the water from inside here, but also have a look inside there. Make sure there's nothing caught at the bottom. Some of the filters, especially the carbon filters, have a seal that goes on the end, and sometimes that seal comes off and gets stuck in the bottom of the filter housing. And you definitely wanna remove that, because if that seal stays in there, it's gonna be really difficult to get these collars tight enough so the system doesn't leak once you've replaced the filters. And then <laughs> the next, the following year, if you go to try to remove that collar, you're gonna to need to be Hercules to get that thing off. Believe me, it's happened to me. Then using that bucket of warm soapy water that you've prepared, you wash out the inside of these housings, put the new filter back inside. Now this O-ring that's around here, I definitely suggest you use some Plumber's Clear silicone grease. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below. You can get them from our e-commerce store. Then take the collar, 
place it back over the filter housing, pull it all the way up, slide it in, and tighten it up. Now at first you just want to do it hand tight. Once you've got it to hand tight, then again using the filter housing wrench, slide it up and just give it a little bit more. Usually even just an eighth of, a, not even an eighth of a turn, a sixteenth of a turn, just something a little bit more just to make sure it doesn't leak. Then do the same process for the carbon filter. By now the UV lamp will have cooled so you can easily handle it. So remove the tabs on either side at the top to remove the electrical connection. So you can see that the wire is still here for the, the ground wire and that's fine. Just set that aside. And then what you can do is just uh, a slight left turn or slight um, counterclockwise turn and the, the lamp will come out. There you go, comes out. Now I'm just handling this by the ends but I definitely suggest um, handling the new one and of course the cord sleeve once you've cleaned it to be wearing gloves. Just like these. So then you're going to remove the sleeve bolt, this little gray sleeve bolt up here. Just unscrew that. Now you need to be careful when you remove the sleeve bolt because sometimes because of scale buildup etc it may actually be attached to the sleeve sometimes it may not. So this one isn't attached. Just pull that and then pull the sleeve straight out. So you need to make sure the sleeve is perfectly clean and I mean perfectly clean it needs to look just like this new one. So again using CLR or vinegar or something like that you can uh, soak a cloth with it, a nice clean cloth because you don't want to scratch this and then go over this whole surface and that should clean most of it off. Now if it doesn't then you may need, may need to soak a cloth in that, uh, that solution and wrap it around this and leave it overnight. Now obviously if you leave it overnight the system is going to not be operational. That's another reason why I always suggest you have a spare quart sleeve on hand. So these are, as I mentioned earlier, they're quite fragile. The ends here are easily cracked or broken so just handle it very carefully. Once you've cleaned up this sleeve and it's good enough to replace, and by the way, like I say, if you don't get it 100% clean, you're definitely going to have to replace it because there's no use putting in a new lamp and the sleeve is so dirty that the, the lamp can't shine through it to kill the bacteria. It's like drawing a curtain across a window or across a light. All right, so then what you need to do is you put the uh, O-ring on about uh, three quarters of an inch or so from the end. Feed that sleeve back in make sure you're feeding it in straight and when you get down to the bottom you'll know that there's you'll notice that there's a spring there and uh, and that's what holds it in place so a little bit is going to be protruding and then you grab that sleeve bolt here put it over top and screw it in and again this only needs to be hand tight all right then you need to grab the lamp this guy here so again, handling it either with gloves or with a, a clean cloth. Feed the lamp in. Now you'll find that when you go to tighten the lamp, it only goes in about a, looks like about a turn and a half, and then you'll feel a hard stop. That's okay. The water is sealed by the uh, sleeve bolt and the, um, the, the quartz sleeve, not by the lamp. And then you can move the, the, um, the jumper around so that it all lines up and once we've lined up the jumper and the pins together push it down and you need to hear it snap into place and it needs to snap on both sides so I always push down the tabs on both sides just to make sure that it snapped into place then what we can do is turn the system back on so we plug it back in and, uh, and the system will power up. Now, the system doesn't know that you've replaced the lamp. So you need to reset the timer. So the timer's here, so there's this button, second button from the, the uh, right. Uh, you, you, you push it and you hold it down and that'll reset it from whatever it said on yours, if it had two days left or ten days left or something like that. Hold it down and that'll reset it to 365. Now sometimes these buttons are a little bit stiff. So try pushing it in with your finger really hard to get it to reset. If for some reason that doesn't reset, you might have to use something pointy like a pen or something like that to get it to, to reset. Okay, once that's been reset, you'll notice that uh, the light will be flashing here green and this light will go green for the, to, for the controller 
And uh, so I usually wait till it finishes flashing, usually about a minute, minute and a half, something like that. Once they're both solid green, then we can fill the system uh, back up with water. So again, leaving the outlet valve closed, open up the inlet valve. I usually open it up about halfway so it fills up with water. Once it's filled up with water, again, we're going to check for leaks. So we talked earlier about the plug at the bottom of the, the filter housing. Um, obviously, you need to make sure you put that back together. I always use some, on that O-ring, I use some clear plumber silicone grease. And again, I'll put a link in the description to that uh, down below. Once it's uh, started filling up with water, you can check it, there's no leaks. Then you can open up the valve all the way, the inlet valve all the way. And then you can open up the outlet valve all the way. Let the water run throughout the whole household and to fill everything up. Now, go to somewhere that has good flow like a laundry sink or a bathtub or somewhere like that, open up the faucet, just open it up a little bit and you'll see water come, come gushing out, but it'll be spits and spurts from some of the air that was in there. Let the water run till it's a nice steady stream. Now, if for any reason the system was shut down for a period of time, or you're concerned that there might be bacteria downstream of the ultraviolet light, you're gonna to need to chemically disinfect it with chlorine. So I've got a great YouTube video that shows you exactly how to do that. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below. Click here for your next video on ultraviolet disinfection, and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, just add them down below. I read them all. I'd love to answer yours.